Wow, this is our last video, section 10.3. I can't believe that we've made it this far. You guys have done a really great job. Uh, I know that it hasn't been easy, especially for those of you who've never taken an online class. So good job, we've, we're almost there. So in section 10.3, this is going to go back to um, 8.1 and 9.2. So we're going to be talking about means of means. In fact, I think that's what those are. I think it's 8.1 and 9.2. Let me look at this real quick just to make sure. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at eight, looking at the stuff. I'm sorry, doing the same kind of math we were doing with 8.1 and 9.2. So we're going to be looking at the population means and the sample means. So we're going to be talking about I'm testing our hypothesis about a mean and understanding. So I don't even really do this. So we're not even going to talk about this and make sure that that's not on anything else. So we're not understanding the difference between statist statistical significance and practical significance. I don't really care about that right now. So we're just going to be testing the hypothesis about the mean. So basically the stuff that we were doing in 10.2, we're going to be doing the same thing, but with means rather than proportions. So let's just jump right into it. So testing our hypothesis um, regarding the population mean, we need to assume that the standard population standard deviation is unknown. So most of the time we are not going to have that population standard deviation. So, so the, because of this, we need to use our T distribution rather than our Z distribution. And we are going to be replacing our sigma with S. So in order to find our t distribution, our t score, we are going to be using this. So this is basically the way that we find our z score. However, we have an s instead of a sigma. So that is our big difference here. So we are going to use our x bar, so our, pop, our sample mean, minus our mu, which is our population mean, over what it, this is our new standard deviation. This is our sample sample error, or I always call it our new standard deviation. So S divided by the square root of N. That's what we're going to be using here. And so when we are looking up our T values, our critical values on our T table, we will be using N minus one degrees of freedom. So these are some reminders of our properties of t-distribution. It is different for different degrees of freedom. So our t-distribution is going to be different depending on how many data points we have. The t-distribution is centered around zero and it's symmetric about zero. Um, the area under the curve is one because of the symmetry. Everything to the right of zero is one half and everything to the left of zero is one half. As t increases or decreases without bound, the ground graph approaches but never equals zero. And the area in the tails of the distribution is a little bit greater than the area of the tails in the standard normal distribution because we are using a sample standard deviation instead of our population standard deviation. So there's a little bit more variability to our t statistic. And as our sample size n increases, our density of the curve gets closer and closer to a standard normal density. And our um, sample standard deviation is going to get closer and closer to the population standard deviation by the law of large numbers. Okay, let's jump in. And when we are testing our hypothesis regarding a population mean, uh, we're going to use the following steps, but we need to make sure that we are using a simple random sample um, there have to be no outliers, and the population needs to be normal dist normally distributed or our sample size has to be larger than 30. So if we know that our population is normal, or yeah, the population is normally distributed, then we don't have to worry about the size of our sample size. But if we don't know if it's, um, it's normally distributed, then our sample size has to be larger than 30. The sample values are independent of each other. Remember, that means that it is 5% um, or less of the population. This looks very similar to what we did with our, um, with our proportion. 
uh, except for we're using mu here instead of p or standard deviation. We're going to use our mu here. So when we are finding, writing our out our um, null and alternative hypothesis, it's going to be mu is greater than or mu is not equal to or mu is less than. So it's the same thing with the left tailed and right tailed and two tailed. We have the two tailed is not equal to left tailed is less than and right tail is greater than. We're assuming the value of the population mean, and um, we call it mu naught. It is the what, what our assumed value of our population mean. Usually you'll be given this value. So then we need to select our level of significance based on the seriousness of making a type one error. So that alpha will be given to you. So you don't need to worry about finding it. The alpha will be given to you. Next, we need to compute our test statistic. I just showed you this on a previous slide. So you do your X bar minus your mu over your standard error there or your new standard deviation as I always call it. So, and then we're going to be looking at the t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. If this does not make sense at all yet, that's okay. We're going to do some math. And as you know, it usually makes a little bit more sense once we do the math with it. So here's our, the same thing when we are doing with our population proportion. We are looking for our critical re regions. So when we are calculating, when we get find our critical value, which is going to be our t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So when we find this value right here, if our test statistic lands in this region right here, if in any of these, if our test statistic lands in there, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. If our test statistic lands us in here, then we fail to reject our null hypothesis. It's the same thing with what we were doing before. It's just using different numbers. We're using t-tables and t-scores and using means rather than population proportions. Then we can compare our critical value with the test statistic, and then we are going to determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. We can use our table 6, which is our t-table, to approximate the p-value. I really prefer not to do that here. This is one case where I really encourage you to use your calculator. It's going to be a, not, a lot more accurate. Our t-tables are totally approximations with p-value. Using your calculator, it's going to be pretty close to exact. You'll see it in a few minutes. Okay. So with our p-value approach, once again, um, we'll look at the probability of it of it being greater than or not equal to or less than. And once again, if our probabilities land us in this critical area here, the critical region, then we reject. If it lands us in here, then we fail to reject. So if our probability is smaller than our alpha, then we will reject. Okay. So we are going to, as I said, we're going to be using a calculator to get those p-values. Let's move on. Let's actually get to, oh, yep, this is a really pretty good disclaimer. So our rounding errors, for my open math, it may make you unhappy and rounding errors may be a thing, which make sure you send me a message if you do the problem over and over and you keep getting it wrong. But minor departures from normality will not adversely affect the result of the test. So if it is close to normal, but it's not actually normal, um, then it's not going to really affect it. So it's approximately normal. If your population is approximately normal, you're good. However, if you have outliers in your data, you shouldn't use this. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you something strange and have some outliers in it. I'm going to give you the problems that you can actually use this on. And if you see that word population mean, if you're working with means, this is what you're going to use. So here is our first problem. Assuming the resting metabol metabolic rate 
assuming the, me- the resting metabolic rate of healthy males in complete silence is 5710-5710 kilojoules a day, researchers measured the RMR of 45 healthy males who were listening to calm classical music and found their mean RMR to be 5708.07 with a standard deviation of 992.05. At the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to conclude that the mean RMR of males listening to calm classical music is different than 5710 kilojoules a day? So this right here is going to be our X bar. Sorry, this right here, this right here is our mu. This right here is going to be our X bar. Sorry about that. That's our X bar. Here is our S because of the 45 males that he um, that they measured. This was our standard deviation, so that will be our S. So we are going to assume that the um, that the RMR of healthy males is this 5710 kilojoules a day. It's a two two tailed test because we're determining whether the RMR differs from the 5710. We just want to know if it differs. So because of that, um, we use the, to have the two-tailed ses, test. We are assuming the sample size is large because the sample size is 45, that's greater than 30. So we really don't care whether our population is normal because our sample size is larger than, ter- than 30. Okay, so step one, we are going to write our um, hypothesis. So we have our Null hypothesis is that mu equals 5710. Our alternative hypothesis says that the mu is not equal to 5710. So that's what we're trying to show, is that the mu does not equal 5710. Our level of significance is A equals 0.05. The sample mean is X bar equals 5708.07 and the sample standard deviation is 992.05. To calculate our test statistic, this is our X bar minus mu over S divided by square root of N. This is the math that we did and we get negative 0.013. This is our test statistic. I'm gonna show you doing this in the calculator. So if you hit stat, tests, and then t-test, t-test, I believe, is your second option. I look real quick just to make sure. So in the stat, tests, t-test is your second option. So here's what it looks like when I put everything in. I'm using stats because I have the mu, the x-bar, and the standard deviation, and I have the sample size. If I didn't if I had the data instead, if I would put that data into L1, then I would use data instead. But I don't have the data. I don't have the raw data. I have the stats. I am using does not equal mu because mu not because I am looking at a two-tailed test. This is set up the exact same way as the Prop Z test, it is just with T test instead. So then when I hit enter, I get my T value. Uh, 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 uh. I get my test statistic right there, negative 0.013. It is the same thing. So that is my T test. This is the way that you would do it in the calculator. So much less work. However, if you are using population means in your um, you probably wouldn't get you be using the means for your final project, but if you were using it um, for your final project, I just totally lost track of what I was going to say. But you would probably be putting everything into L1 instead. So, okay, moving on. Since it's a two-tailed test, we determine that the critical values at 0.05 level of significance n minus one degrees of freedom. Do not forget the n minus one. It doesn't make a big difference in this particular problem, but in other problems that have less than 40 40 data points, it's going to make a difference. So since it's a two-tailed test, we have to cut 0.05 in half 
to get 0 0.025. So looking up my T value from my T table, I'm gonna go down here. Notice how it jumps from 40 to 50. Notice how it does that? So you have to use the number that is closest to the degrees of freedom you have. It's not gonna, it's not a huge difference in the numbers, but it's enough. So the reason I got 2.021 here, because 44 is closer to 40 than it is to 50. Because 44 is closer to 40 than it is to 50, at the 0 0.025, I'm gonna use 40, and I get 2.021. And that gives me my two, um, that gives me my critical values with my T table. So to find those critical values on your T table, you are going to use how many degrees of freedom it is and find that value there. There's another great way to do this. This is something I found online while I was poking around to see if there was a way to do this on the calculator. There is not a way to do this on the calculator. You have to look at your T-table, or there's a link right here at the bottom of this. It will be on the PowerPoint online. If I click on that link, it's going to bring me to this calculator here. So if I put in, if I put in 44 degrees of freedom and probability level, so that is my test statistic, or that's my alpha, sorry, my alpha there, I hit calculate, and it gives me my two-tailed test. It gives me right here 2.02 .02 plus or minus 2.02. .02. Now I can't get out of here. Let me see, come on. I can't get back into that, there we go. It gives me my 2.021, .02 sorry, I guess I didn't, um, uh, anyway, okay. So I need to get back to what I'm just doing. So by hand methods, not exact for the p-value, use the t-test function. So our p-value, let's look over here. Our p-value is huge, look at this, 0.9896. That's a huge p-value. That p is definitely greater than our level of significance, which was the two t level, 0 0.025. Remember, that's the 0 0.05 divided by two. So since that p-value was greater than that, then we are going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. So if I was looking at my, so here's 0 0.025, here's a point nine seven five. My p-value was 0.9 something like that. So it was, it's in here somewhere. It is in here somewhere. My test statistic, negative 0 0.013. If my mean is right here, negative 0 0.013 would be around here somewhere. So clearly it is in the this region. It is not out here in the critical region. So I'm going to fail to reject that null hypothesis. Let's look at another problem. Oh wait, let's write out our ugly thing. So there's insufficient evidence at alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the mean RMR of males listening to calm classical music differs from 5710 kilojoules a day. So we're saying that that the sample size, the sample that we did, the um, does not does not um, lead us to believe that that's going to be different. It's not outside of those standard deviations. Okay. Let's do another example. So according to the United States Mint, quarters weigh 5.67 grams. A researcher is interested in determining whether the state quarters have a weight that is different from 5.67 grams. He randomly selects 18 state quarters, weighs them, and obtains the following data. At alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to conclude that state quarters have a weight different than 5.67 grams? So I recommend right now pausing and in your calculator in the L1, so you hit stat edit and in that L1, put in all of these state quarter values. So put all of those values in there. We're gonna use those in a minute. So pause it right now, put those in there and then we'll come back and we'll talk about, um, talk about this problem. 
Okay, so hopefully you have those into your L1. <clears throat> We're gonna assume that the weight of the state quarters is 5.67 grams, so this is our mu. This is a two-tailed test. Since we're interested in determining whether the weight differs from the 5.67 grams. The sample size is small, it's less than 30, so we need to verify that the data comes from a population that's normally distributed with no outliers before proceeding to doing our math. So let me show you. So here, so this, these right here would be our two standard deviations away from the mean. These would determine our outliers and um, it looks like everything is within there, so it's all no approximately normal. And here you can see using our um, box and whisker plot, which is a great thing to put on your final project, by the way. So using our box and whisker plot, you can see that there are no outliers. Because remember, if we had an outlier, there'd be a little star somewhere out there. But we have no outliers, so this is beautiful. So because of this, we can now do the actual math. So what I recommend now... I would like you to pause this video and I would like you to do the math using by putting everything into your calculator or you can you need to calculate your test statistic that's fine I'm calculating it by hand using right here 5.67 grams everything that's in your L1 you could get your sample standard deviation from that because using your L1, you can use do your one variable stats. Remember the one var stats? That will give you your X bar, and that will give you your S. I think it says SX or something like that. Using your one var stats, you can get those. So I recommend pausing this, doing the hand calculations, or at least doing the t-test function on your calculator, and then we will come back and we'll do this together. Okay, so hopefully you did this on your own. Um, I got that the, uh oh, you're not, don't look at these yet. I got that the mu was 5.67. So this is my null hypothesis is that the mu equals 5.67. My alternative hypothesis is mu does not equal 5.67. My level of significance is alpha equals 0 0.05. From the data, the sample mean is calculated to be 5.7022. And our 5.7022, sorry, our sample standard deviation is 0 0.0497. I got those right here. See those numbers right there? And using hand calculating it, I got 2.75 as my test statistic. Looking here, I'm going to show you with the calculator. Because I put everything into L1, this right here, I use the data here instead of stats. Stats is where you would already have your X bar and your standard deviation, your S. So if you have the data in your L1, move highlight data here, but you have to put in mu naught because it doesn't know your population uh, mean. So you have to put in mu naught. If you don't put that in there, it's going to use whatever number's already in there. Keep L1 in your list. We are looking at a two-tailed test, so it does not equal mu naught. When I hit enter, I got that my test statistic is 2.75. Beautiful. And my P, take a look at P, equals 0 0.0136 approximately. Okay. So let's take a look at, um, since it's, it's a two-tailed test, so we're going to determine our critical values with alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So let's look at our t-table. Whoops, I thought I put the t-table on there. I did not put the t-table on there. On the t-table, you would look at look for the, the row 17, and then you would look across the row 17. Actually, I have it over here. So row 17, and look over to 0 0.025, and then go down, and you would get 2.110. This is your critical value, 2.110. So I have that right here, the positive and the negative. 
So essentially, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So if I drew this, so here's my mean. Right here is negative 2.11. Here is my positive 2.11. My, my test statistic that we calculated in the last one was 2.75. So that means it's 2.75 standard deviations above the mean. My critical value is 2.11. So this test statistic here is outside of here. It is past that 2.11. Because it is out here in this critical region, it is in the critical region, we can reject the null hypothesis. Because if it is outside of that, because essentially what it is saying is that the null hypothesis remains true if, if your answer, your test statistic lies in this region, our null hypothesis remains true. If it is outside of that region, if it's in either of these regions, we reject our null hypothesis. So let's take a look at our p-values here. Okay, so we had that with our, I'm gonna show you how to do this on the t-table. You're probably not going to wanna do it on the t-table because calculator's so much easier. On our calculator, we got that our p-value was about 0.014. And that 0.014 is smaller than 0.025. That number is smaller. So because our P, oh, because our P is less than alpha, our P was less than alpha. So the probability of getting that test um, statistic was smaller than our level of significance, we can reject the null hypothesis. Another way to look at this, let me go back to highlighting where we were here. So we were right here. Okay, this was our, this is our critical value. So let's take a look, whoa, I'm having issues. So let's take a look at, look for zero, that's not what I'm looking for. We're looking for our test statistic, which was 2.75, we're gonna look for that in the row that has the 17 degrees of freedom. So you're not gonna find that exact number. <clears throat> we're gonna find a number close to it. So here I am, my number closest to that 2.75 would be one of these two numbers. Both of these two numbers, this number here corresponds to 0.01. This number here corresponds to 0 0.005. Both of these numbers here are smaller than this because these two numbers are smaller than this because this is 0 0.01, 0 0.005 are smaller than 0 0.025. We would reject the null hypothesis. If you get find a number smaller than that when you're looking up your test statistic, that was terrible, on your t-table, then you would reject the null hypothesis. See why I say it's better to do it on the calculator? Because on the calculator, I got a really nice 0.014 and I was able to see that that was smaller, 0.025. That made This makes it so much easier than looking at the t-table. However, in a pinch, you can look at the t-table. Okay, finally, let's write this out. And I'm having issues, okay. There's sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the mean weight of state quarters differs from 5.67 grams. All right, so if you have questions on this, make sure you send me a message or an email. I will do my best to help you. Also, remember to work on that final project. Send me your questions on that. It is, I know that I left a lot of things unanswered. That's because this is 100% on you. It is for you to pull from the things that we did, that we have done in this class, and apply them to what you have. You do not have to use everything we've did in the we've done in this class. Everything's not going to apply. Just pull some things. So it really doesn't have to be big and elaborate and fancy and complicated. It can be pretty simple, but there only needs to be one hand calculation. Also, one more thing 
Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but quiz seven is optional and extra credit. If you need a few extra points to help boost your grade, the quiz number seven is the way to go. And in week 10, there is a PowerPoint that I put in there that is a review PowerPoint that compares, it takes a look at um, uh, chapters nine and 10, and it really goes over pretty well what the comparisons are and what words you're looking for. It says, just says final review PowerPoint. So take a look at that before you take test three. Test three will open on June 8th and close on June 11th. I am so excited to see your final projects and to see all the lovely comments on them. It's been a great term. Thanks. Bye.